Hi, my name is Tony Montefusco. I have a program for you here today that I ran into a situation that I had to do some pretty good thinking on. The party brought me this nice expensive French clock. It was a three-piece ensemble with claws and nays and gold, gold trimmed, and it was quite expensive. And what had happened to it, the mainspring had broken. And in the process, it took almost 60% of the teeth away from the barrel. And customary, I went through my junk box and tried to find a, a replacement to match it and to no avail. And I called a couple of colleagues of mine, and we went through their junk boxes, and we couldn't find anything in their boxes. And I also contacted a few suppliers, and it was just not, not available. So I slept on this for a few days, and I said to myself, what am I going to do with this? The lady wants the clock fixed, and I got no replacement, and had to come up with some kind of an idea to repair this barrel. And this is a procedure that I went through in, in restoring a barrel that was unavailable for replacement. The barrel looked pretty much in this condition. Teeth were missing, teeth were folded over. So I come up with an idea of making a ring gear for it. And I'll go through it with you and tell you just how I did it. First of all, you want to count the number of teeth that are in the barrel all the way around. And in this case, it happened to be 72 teeth. After I got my, my tooth count, I measured the diameter of some of the good teeth from this point to this point, and got my OD dimension across the barrel. And I put that down on a piece of paper with, along with the 72 teeth, so that as we go through the process, we don't forget our measurements. Now at the same time, in this stage, I selected a cutter that would fit these teeth, or in some cases I have to make a cutter that'll conform with the profile of the tooth. So I, I already selected my cutter, and I selected my index plate of 72 teeth. Now, the next thing I, I did was, I took a piece of solid brass bar stock and I cut a, a slice off of it. And the thickness of it was 3 16 of an inch thick, which would give me enough room to cut the teeth and, and make a new barrel. What I did was I selected a piece that was just a little bit larger in OD than this one here, so that I had some extra room to work on. Now the next thing I done was I put the barrel into the lathe and I cut off all the teeth that were on the, of the damaged teeth that were on the barrel. I set my cutter at 15 degrees and this I cut it in an outward direction. This this part is in my headstock. This is going out to the end of the lathe. We're gonna do this program in two parts. I'm going to show you the drawings now, and later in the program I'm going to actually show you how I did it on the lathe, so you can get a good idea of what was involved in it. Cut off all our teeth, cut it at a 15 degree angle, and we're going to make a, a new ring for that. Now once we have the teeth all cut off, I want you to take your measurements at the highest points, which is here and here, and put that down on the piece of paper along with your other figures. Now, in making and selecting the ring gear, I want the dimension to fit here and here so that when I make the new gear on it, I'm going to have a lot of room to expand with it.
This is the O-ring that I cut from a piece of bar stock. I cut the center out, and I, I made it larger than the original measurements that I took to give me some room to, to dress it all off. I put the I put the slice of bar stock into the lathe. And I proceeded to cut out the center. When I got to the to this point, I took my cutter, which was on my barrel, I started cutting from this direction. And I cut that barrel 15 degrees that way. What I did with this one is I took and I moved the cutter all the way up to here, put my lathe in reverse, and then I, I cut I cut my 15 degree angle going in this way, which gave me gave me a match to my barrel. Now place the ring gear onto the barrel, like so, and check it for fit. Now if it fits nice and tight, and you have this, this angle and this angle meet, and this angle and this angle meet, and it closes up nice and tight up onto the barrel, now we're ready to sweat it on. I take it, put it on a piece of asbestos block or ceramic block, whichever you might have, and just solder this piece right onto the barrel, making it one, one unit. After it's cooled down, this is what, we, what it looks like when we have our new ring in place. Take, take the barrel, put the unit with the barrel in the ring now, that's all attached to it, into your lathe, and dress it down to a, a diameter to your original plate on this side. Because we made this 3 16 of an inch thick, which is thicker than the tooth, so we want to dress it down so that it's nice and straight with the barrel. We also take and dress down the OD, but in dressing down the OD, as I told you before, make this about 10 thousandths larger than the original one, so we have a little room to cut our teeth. The reason why we made this 316 thick so that we could dress it down to the original plate on the barrel. Now we have our new teeth cut. We put it in the milling machine, put this, this whole barrel goes onto the milling machine, and we proceed to cut our 72 teeth as such. By cutting the teeth, we take, we take one cutting first, then we take a reading on it and see if we have the same close to the reading of the original barrel. If, if, it's, if it isn't, then we set your depth a little bit deeper and cut it exactly to the same OD diameter as you had in the original in the original barrel. Now with a procedure like this here, I found a couple machine shops around town that had some bar stock. There was one also had some some uh, bearing stock, which was made out of brass or bronze. And it come out a little easier because it's a hollow center and you don't have to waste all that material inside. So I was able to pick up some, some uh, bearing stock as well. If you have access to anything like that, well, it's, it's, it's in pretty good shape. But now we have a barrel that was completely obliviated from a broken mainspring and we made a brand new barrel out of it. We cut off the extra dimensions here, we cut off the extra dimensions here, we put in our 72 teeth, and now we're ready to install this barrel back into the clock again. I find the procedure very successful. I've done it on several occasions now since I, since I developed it, and it worked out well for me.
So now when I get a barrel that's got has a broken mainspring in, sometimes when they, one comes in that only has five or six broken teeth in it, instead of trying to replace the teeth and putting in a piece and, and trying to match it up with the other teeth, which sometimes is very difficult, I find it just as easy to just cut them all off and just make a whole new ring and when you machine them, you're going to machine all your teeth nice and even all the way around. You're not going to get any short one here and a long one here like you would if you put a piece in. So I found this procedure quite, quite easily to do. Now with the drawing program completed, I'll take you into the shop and I'll show you just how we do this on the lathe and the milling machine. Okay, we're in the shop, and now we're going to show you the portion of the blade work. This is the barrel that's been broken, damaged, it's got damaged teeth, as you can see, around all the way around the barrel. What I have done, I have counted my number of teeth, which total 72, and then I took a reading. or the OD of the ring, which reads me 1.6.10. I'll put that all down on a piece of paper, so that when we get to the final analysis here, when we cut our gear, we're going to wind up with that same number on the gear ring. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to cut all these teeth off of this. I have my lathe set at 15 degrees and we'll proceed to cut them off. You don't want to cut too much at one time. You just want to take small cuts so that you don't destroy nothing. Make it a little bit easy. I want you to cut down as far as the bottom of the teeth. I don't want you to go any further. Don't go into the drum. But if you do, then you're gonna you're gonna destroy the whole thing. Okay, we still got plenty of teeth left, so. Just a little trace of it will take, take another cut. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of fold over here. What I'm going to do is I'll just take a file and I'll clean some of that off. All right, that's all our teeth gone. 
Now the next thing I want to do, I want to take the measurement of this taper at the largest end, which is at the, at the barrel end. So that when we make our, our taper on our ring, we have the same, same dimension. Okay, that measure is 1.5, right on the nose. I'll put that down on a piece of paper along with my other figures, 1.5. Now we'll take this off and we'll put our ring on and we can cut that. Okay, we have our ring in place. Now we're going to cut, what I'm saying, 15 degrees. When I cut the barrel, I cut it back in here. What we're going to do here is gonna, we're going to push this up forward and then I'm going to put my lathe in reverse and I will cut my taper. Again, take a little bite at a time. Don't try to take too much. Time to gel a cutter and not even ruin your piece. Take periodic measurement as you go along. You don't cut too large a hole. Put the reading on that. Point five on our on our barrel. Just a little bit more. Not not quite not quite enough. I'm trying to barrel in here. You know, just got to go down and about a thousand is all I need. Take another measurement. All I'm measuring is, is the outside of the hole. Get pretty close. I'm going to go about another half a thousand just to get a better, a nice tight fit there. One more little cut here will do it. Now the taper on the barrel is going to match the taper in the ring. Just like that. That's a nice, that's a nice fit. Now we're ready to sweat this on and, and complete our ring to the barrel. Okay, we're on our asbestos block now, and I'm ready to sweat this onto the, I use a burnsomatic torch, 
I use this stay clean flux. You can use any kind of flux at all. You can use a you can use a paste flux or a liquid flux because I like the liquid. It, it runs a little bit better. Put a nice bead of flux around it. We'll heat it up. We'll heat it up nice and nice and hot and evenly all the way around, so that the solder will flow nicely. Now you see how much higher the ring is than the than the original plate, but we have room to dress that down after we get it all soldered and cooled down. A nice bead of solder on it. Don't be, don't be skimpy with you, because we can we can cut this off. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll just let that cool down a bit now. We'll put it back on the lathe, and we'll dress it down. Okay, we're back on the lathe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress this ring down to conform with the original plate. And then I'll also cut the OD down so we can get it ready for the milling machine. I can't emphasize the fact too much. But don't take too big a bite when you're cutting on a lathe. Let the lathe do the work. Try to take too much, you're just gonna you're gonna ruin your whole job. Not a very big lathe, it's only a six-inch lathe. house bends that are nine inch with a lot of, a lot of power to them. But it does a good job for them, you're not very satisfied with it. So it comes down to the solder line now. Keep the solder here. Much, much beyond the solder line. Just a little bit more there. Maybe I'll take some of that off.
Okay. You cut it down to the original barrel plate. There's still a little bit of solder there, but that'll come off when I when I finish it with the sandpaper. I'll take some off the off the OD, and we'll get down. when you're working on the lathe, put a pair of safety glasses on to keep the chips from going in your eyes. A little chip with a fly in it. leave this approximately 10 thousandths bigger than our original ring. pretty close. One point seven. I gotta go down about a half a thousand. I'll have my I'll have my Okay, that's, I'm about 12 thousandths larger, so I'm going to leave it right there. We'll get ready to put it on our milling machine. We can cut the teeth. As you can see, the, the solder flowed nice all the way around on the inside. So we got a, we got a nice bond all the way around. I'll clean that off after when we, we do our final cleanup. Okay, here's my milling machine. What I had to do here is the hole in the barrel plate is too large for the arbor on my on my miller. So what I had to do there is I took and made up a little bushing to fit inside the hole so it's nice and tight. And then I can place that onto the machine. I got a nice, I got a nice true run that way. I already selected my my cutter, and I have my index plate mounted for 72 teeth. Get this all locked up nice and tight. Like all your machine work, all your work has to be tight. You can't have it loose. Get true cuttings. Okay. That looks pretty good. What I'll do here is I'll I'll set my height and I'll make a I'll make a couple of test cuts first. A little oil on the cutter. I'm 
get, get your cutter dulled on you. And then what I'll look for, I'll look for the addendum on the tooth. That's the round part that comes to the point at the top. Once I've reached that, then I have the depth that I'm looking for. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. And now I can proceed to cut my my 72 teeth. A little story behind this milling machine. When I lived up north, I used to go to a machine shop to get my brass up there. And one day I was up there picking up my brass. They were installing a new milling machine which was hydraulic. Once you set it up this way and turn the switch on, it did the whole job by itself, which was quite nice. And I asked the foreman, I said, what are you going to do with that old miller that you've got? And the gentleman said to me, if you can carry it out, you can have it. <laughs> well, you know what I did, don't you? I got me a couple able-bodied men, because this thing weighs about 200 pounds. It has a cast iron pedestal on it. And I put it in my station wagon and took it home. <laughs> I've been happy with it ever since. It's been a good machine for me. I like this one better than I do my attachment on the lathe. I have a milling attachment on the lathe, but it's, it's a crank in and crank out, which takes a lot of time. And this is a lever feed, which goes along a lot quicker and a lot easier to operate. about halfway there. The easy part is cutting the teeth. The hard part is getting it all prepared, doing all the leg work and soldering the ring on and dressing it down and getting it all ready. The final analysis here is, is, is the easiest part. <laughs> At least I think so anyhow. coming around to the side of the teeth. I'll have to go over those few test ones that I did at the beginning. Get them all even with the others. Okay, there we are. We got our 72 teeth all cut. Now I can put this back on a lathe, take it off of here, and we can clean it up and dress it up and make it look like brand new. It really does do a nice job. Now what I'll do is I'll take a measurement and see how how we stand to our original barrel. Okay, I read, I read seven, one point seven point five. Or what I'll do is I'll go around, I'll raise my index just a little bit more, and I'll go around once more, and I'll and I'll get my one point six. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this on the lid, and we're going to finish it all off. I'm going to get rid of all. All the extra solder that's in there and finish off the front. I 
just use a piece of sandpaper. And I'll dress off the front. Inside and I'll get, I guess, some of that little bit of solder that's left on the outside. I'll take a piece of memory cloth and I'll polish off that drum. This will get rid of the, the little bit of solder that's there and clean up our drum. This is the same polishing method I use when I do my shells on my grandfather clock before I lacquer them. There's a nice job on them. Okay, there's our barrel. Well, I see there's a little bit more solder left on there, so I'm going to get rid of that. I, I don't want that on there. The least amount of solder you show, the nicer the job. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Now in some cases, you get what they have a two-piece barrel, where the, where the barrel drum is already soldered to the plate. And you don't have to make a ring here, you can just make a whole plate. And I've had, I've had occasions to do those, and what I do there is I, I take a, another piece of bar stock solid, and then I'll countersink the inside part, put the barrel on it, and then and then sweat it on. So then you wind up with a you wind up with another another nice big good barrel. You got all new teeth in it. Teeth are all nice and straight. They're not worn out. Makes for a good job. I also did one last week gentleman brought me in and he tried to repair it himself and what he did I, I hope you can see this he he went just a little bit too deep into the barrel plate when he made his cuttings to put his put his teeth in and he also got had a big gouge up in here so what I did was I just I wasn't gonna mess with that so I just took and cut all the teeth off of it and, and made a ring for it and put a new ring on and then I took and I I filled in the solder I filled in the, all these cracks with solder and made it make, made a nice looking barrel out of it now. And this one is out of that out of a French clock that I was telling you about in the beginning of the program. That the, the, te the barrel teeth were all abbreviated all all the whole around the whole barrel. And made a, it made a new it made a new barrel on that. It does do, it does make a nice job. We got rid of a lot of the solder inside. Okay, here's our movement, all reassembled, cleaned and polished, the new barrel in place. Here's our new barrel it's on the time side where the broken mainspring was. 
and we got a nice, a nice completed job to chip off this, this striker. They come out very, very well. I'm very proud of this project that I've taken on. Sometimes when the, somebody brings you in a repair job and you don't think you can do it, take on a challenge. Take a little time to think it out, a little ingenuity, a little patience, and I'm sure most of you can do the same job as I did. Just say that I'm going to do it because somebody else didn't do it. Just take the challenge. Uh, here's the case. As you can see, it's quite a quite a nice case. I did also did a complete restoration on that. I polished it and lacquered it, and now it's all ready for the movement to be installed. This is part of a three-piece ensemble. The candelabras are done. Those are, I sent them back home already. The bottle of wine doesn't belong to the three-piece ensemble. That belongs to me. I gave myself a little reward for doing such an excellent job. <laughs> but it did turn out very, very well, and I'm very pleased with it. See if I can get you a little closer shot here of the case. Quite a, quite a nice case. Very ornate. That's me with my big happy smile because we've done such a good job. So like I said before, take on a challenge. It'll make a better clockmaker out of you. And you'll be proud of it yourself. You'll be glad that you've done something that you didn't think you could ever do and you've accomplished doing it. Uh, this completes our program for today. I hope I've been some help to you and some encouragement. And until we meet again, may your clock keep on ticking forever. Thank you.